what does Apple do? What does Coca-Cola do? What does General Motors do if they're moving product to these territories in dispute and critically product to Russia? Well, in, in my cab over here, I would have had a different response than what just happened with the words out of Boris Johnson's mouth in terms of actually So Boris having, Johnson changed the dialogue this morning. In, in terms of that next salvo of actually naming, even though we don't have the names of those five Russian banks and three high net worth individuals, that does change the game. The sanctions we've been talking about <clears throat> haven't actually been levied, but you now have tangible actions that have market reaction kind of forthcoming once we actually know who they're talking about. I don't need to know your client uh, discussions. That would be rude. But I want to know what American corporations are saying today. George Schultz was expert at this with his linkages with American oil and American industry. What are the conversations American companies are having? American companies, and again, we've been hearing the same rhetoric since mid-December when Russia began moving troops towards the border with Ukraine. American companies were assessing exposure. They were trying to understand how much risk they really had and understand potential exit strategies for assets, but no one was doing anything. I think still, even until Boris Johnson's remarks, you're not seeing companies talk about exiting the market. You're not seeing assets move the, leave the country from U.S. businesses. Everyone's waiting because that is a bit of a one-way off-ramp where you may not be able to re-enter the market if you preemptively leave. Dan, do you expect to hear, and thank you for joining us, fantastic to catch up with you as always, do you expect the administration in America to use the same language the Prime Minister did in the last 20 minutes? I'm not so sure I would expect the U.S. administration uh, or even Germany to use the same language that we saw out of Prime Minister Johnson. I think that has been the one red line, which has been an amorphous red line over the last few weeks of what is an invasion, what constitutes an invasion. If you talk about the Donbas, which have had a Russian presence since 2014, is that the red line? I would probably argue, based on the sanctions that we saw imposed yesterday by the U.S., which were largely symbolic, that the red line is really anything west of the Donbas, but that hasn't been made clear. I think now you may have some clarity coming after the actions of the Russian government yesterday. So, Dan, we've talked for a long time, many weeks now, about the unity of NATO, European members, the United States, the UK. Are we starting to see a split on what we've seen over the weekend and how to characterize it? I don't, I don't know if we're necessarily seeing a split just yet. I think you still have a fairly robust multilateral response. I think certainly seeing Olaf Scholz say that Nord Stream 2 is essentially done for the moment um, is a fairly bold statement. The, we certainly heard President Biden use similar language that um, Chancellor Schultz wouldn't use while standing next to him. I think the alignment is still there. Some of this may just be the cadence of how these actions are being rolled out um, more so than anything else. Obviously, Dan, Vladimir Putin had to make this risk calculation when he decided to recognize these contested separatist uh, regions, knowing full well that the threat of sanctions was on the table. Is the Russian economy well enough fortified at this point, eight years after the annexation of Crimea and the, and the repercussions that followed suit from that? Can Vladimir Putin withstand this much better and therefore these sanctions aren't going to necessarily have the desired deterrent effect? So the, these sanctions, and again, the deterrent has been the real question. Is the threat of sanctions enough to deter President Putin? I think we saw the answer yesterday was no. That being said, the sanctions that have been threatened, it, this really is an unprecedented situation. And I've said this on the show before, but this, there's not been a scenario with this set of sanctions so comprehensive, export control, energy bans, banking bans for an economy as advanced as Russia. So I, I don't think Fortress Russia could necessarily handle the full salvo of Western sanctions that have been described. And I think just looking at the markets this morning, you may begin to see kind of that voting with their feet that the markets may take related to how well Russia can sustain this.